Do you want to know how to get the best, most cinematic footage you can get out of your Insta360 GO 2? Well, stick around and I'll show you how. Hey guys, welcome to Adventure FPV. My name is Lee. If you're new to the channel, welcome. So today I'm gonna to talk about the Insta360 GO 2 and how to get the best quality footage out of it. Now this is a FPV first person view drone video channel, but these concepts will apply to anyone who's trying to use this camera. There's gonna be some specific quad stuff, but uh, this is mostly gonna be general information. So to give you a little bit of information about myself, uh, I am a professional videographer and I got into FPV to add an extra tool to my toolkit and now I'm hooked. Yeah, I basically I got this camera about a month ago and I, I instantly wanted to figure out how to make it look better than it does right out of the box. So uh, I did a lot of uh, research, a lot of testing on this and I want to show you guys, share the information about the settings I use in the camera, uh, on the app on the phone, in the Insta360 GO Studio and then in my editing software which is Final Cut Pro. But these principles should apply to any editing software. They're just kind of general color grading techniques and things like that. And then I'm going to show you how I export it. Okay, but before we dive into all the settings, there are a couple things I want to talk about. So this camera is uh, a little bit sensitive to vibrations. So if you're flying it on a quad, I would definitely make sure you have the best tune possible on your quad in order to avoid any sort of jello or shake or anything like that. The next thing I want to talk about is if you are putting it on a quad to make sure that the mount that you use is somewhat soft. Uh, I 3D printed a TPU mount that's extremely pliable and this gives a little bit of room for dampening when you're flying. Uh, I'll put links in the description to where I downloaded it and uh, you can print your own. I, I also prefer to do a horizontal mount instead of a vertical mount. I think the vertical may give too much room for wiggle this way. Maybe I'm wrong, I've, I've tested a few, I just prefer, prefer going uh, horizontal. All right, and the last thing I wanna mention uh, before we get started on the settings is making sure that you have an ND filter. If you're not familiar with ND filters, they're basically like sunglasses for your camera. And this will allow you to slow your shutter speed down to reach that 180 shutter degree uh, rule. I, I don't always follow that rule, um, but it does give you the best looking motion blur in your footage. If you can do your shutter speed at twice your frame rate, you're probably gonna get the most uh, natural looking motion blur and things like that, but I don't always stick to that rule if I think that it's gonna look better to expose the photo, uh, the video, as opposed to just trying to make motion blur, I will go ahead and uh, just adjust it to make it look the best I can. These are uh, ND uh, 8, 16, and 32 in this kit here from uh, Telson, and this is the Freewheel kit, and this is a 8, 16, 32, and 64. So the higher you go up on that number, like the 64 is gonna be like very, very dark sunglasses for very, very bright days. So it just depends. You can screw them on and off and kind of pick, but honestly, I usually stick with about a 32 all the time, and it usually works pretty good for me. Uh, obviously, if it's late, I take it off. If it's dark or early in the morning, I just don't use one at all. All right, so let's dive in and take a look at some of the settings and things that I use on the phone and the Insta360 Studio, and we'll dive right in. So let's take a look at a couple settings on the camera itself before we dive into the application. So if you press this button over here, you can select through and go to your settings. So there's one thing in particular here that you wanna make sure is set, and that is your bit rate. I believe there is an option to go between a high, medium, and a low bit rate, but the high bit rate is gonna give you the most amount of data so you can really push your color grades and things in post. So let's also take a look here. If we go to pro video mode, which is the mode I always film in, and you hold down the record button, you'll see that there are a couple options for your aspect ratio, your filming resolution, your frame rate, and then the type of uh, perspective that you get. I always use ultra wide. I think there's narrow and some other things. So your color is also an option. You can go to log, standard, or vivid. Um, typically on all the other cameras I use, I would film in a log profile in order to get the most data. But I found that on the Insta360 GO 2, when I try to push the log data when color correcting and post-production, that it kind of gives some weird artifacting and banding in the sky sometimes. So I found that the standard is actually my favorite to color grade with. So inside the Insta360 app, available for iPhone and Android, uh, once you get connected to your device, you'll be able to see different modes you can shoot in for photos, videos, pro video. I always shoot in pro video mode. Uh, this will allow you to stabilize your footage in post-production as opposed to doing it in camera, and you get a much, much better result. And you also have a few other options to reframe and other things, which I'll show you once we jump into there. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to pro video mode. 
and I always set everything to manual exposure. Uh, the ISO is set as low as we possibly can for the lighting conditions. 100 gives us the least amount of noise. The shutter speed is typically twice your frame rate, which gives you the most motion blur. So I always film at 30 frames per second, so that means we're going to want to film at 1 60th on the shutter speed. I don't always stick to that rule, uh, but it does help. So for the white balance, um, on a bright sunny day, you're probably looking at about 5,000, 5,500 Kelvin. Unfortunately, you can't really refine. You're either at 5,000 or 6,500 or 4,000. But it is very important to get this right. We are going to make adjustments to this in post, but we want to get it as close as possible. We don't want it to be too yellow or too blue uh, in the beginning. So we want to try and get it as close as possible. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up one of our pro video files that we've recorded. I copied these over to my hard drive uh, before I did this. You can leave them on the camera as well. But we're gonna go ahead and select a file in the Insta360 Studio. You can do this in Windows, Mac, or on your phone. And there's my goofy face. Oh, and another good tip, make sure your lens is clean, no fingerprints. I would probably suggest using something better than a t-shirt, but um, I guess I'm just savage like that, so. Uh, and then you can see there, I just changed the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. Um, that's pretty much how I always output my files. You can go in different formats for social media or whatever. Uh, you can see I'm also going to go ahead and trim. You can grab the handles at the beginning and the end of your clip to trim uh, the stuff that you don't want or you don't care for. That way you can save a little bit of space on your hard drive by not exporting uh, footage that's unnecessary. All right, now there's different types of stabilization. You'll see uh, you can turn it off and you can see what that looks like. It uh, looks kind of wonky on here, uh, kind of a wonky takeoff, but you can see it's bumpy without the stabilization on because I shot it in pro video mode. You can do flow state stabilization, which will lock your horizon. Um, and that's probably okay if you're not doing flips and rolls and things like that. Uh, I just prefer FPV stabilization, even if I'm not doing flips and rolls because I kind of like the look of the banking turns. But obviously some jobs warrant you to lock the horizon and you know some don't. So here, this is the field of view selection. Uh, you can have the ultra wide action view, linear and narrow. I always export to linear. So these are the final settings here on the export button. You go ahead and click here and there are some settings here. You can adjust your bit rate on the output file. Um, your frame rate is pretty much locked in. Your resolution is here as well. I always just use the native resolution and I usually turn my bit rate all the way up. But there are some different codecs you can export to, like H.265, H.264, and you can also export to uh, ProRes, which has no compression at all, but it's gonna take up a lot more room on your hard drive. Um, H.264 looks good, 265 looks great. I think you get a little more data out of 265, so that's typically how I export. Um, this Color Plus option, I never use it. Uh, it's supposed to enhance colors, but again, I like to do everything on my own. Uh, remove grain. I do actually use this setting to remove any noise and things like that that could be in it. So I think that's a great option. You just click OK and it's going to export to your hard drive. All right, so now we're on to the fun part, color correction and exporting our final product. So one of the first things I like to do is find a nice frame in the video footage that shows some highlights, some contrast and a lot of colors in the, in the scene. So this way we can kind of start, this is a jumping off point to start color correcting. So one of the first things I like to do is a white balance. So you can click on the balance color. It's gonna have an automatic. You're gonna to wanna to switch it to white balance and select the eyedropper and pick something that's white. And there you can see the whole thing kind of shifted from a yellow to a little bit more blue, the entire image by doing that. And uh, that's a real nice way to correct any problems you have with white balance. So now we're gonna add a color wheel. And over here you can see on our Luma scope, you have the bottom, which is our shadows, and then the top is our highlights. So we don't wanna go above a 100 or below zero, but we can drag our shadows down here to get closer, which will darken up that a little bit. And we can bring our highlights up. Another thing I like to do is mess with the midtones. This gives a lot of really nice contrast. And this is really something that doesn't have to be looked at on a scope. It's just something that you like the look of. Uh, personally, I like Rec. 709, vibrant colors, very contrasty, but everybody has a different take. And this whole thing is up to you. So we're gonna go into the hue saturation curves. This is a little trick. You can add on the Luma versus saturation. You can drop both ends of the highlights and the shadows to remove any color bleed that may be coming through. So that's a nice little trick too. So now we're gonna add a color curve, which is gonna affect our 
lows, mediums, and highs on the luminance scale. So here you can see on the highlights, look at the clouds. We're recovering some of the details on those clouds. So really this is kind of a, a personal look too. You can kind of drag it down till you see where, what you like. And then same on the shadows. I mean, I wouldn't want to crush it too far. You don't want to go down below that zero on the Luma scale. And then again on the midtones here in the middle, you can kind of just bounce it around till you find what you like. And I can promise you I'm going to come back and retouch up some of this stuff because it's never exactly right the first time you do it once you start watching the video. It's all just kind of a little bit of an art. Okay, so we're going to do a color wheel and we're going to add a color mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the sky and you can see if you go too big on that dropper, you might select a cloud and now you're selecting the color of that cloud too. So you want to make sure you're just selecting the color that you want. And this softness scale here will make it so it's not so harsh. It kind of bleeds into multi colors of blue. And here, if you see, I move this highlight wheel around or the midtones or the shadows, it changes the color of the entire sky. So, you know, get creative with it. Um, I like to make things look a little bit more natural. Uh, Rec 709, very vibrant. So we're just gonna go ahead and select that and we're gonna move on to another color. So we're gonna do the same thing, add a color wheel and a color mask. And now we're gonna do this kind of cloudy color on the horizon. And you can play with the shadow, uh, overall global color, the highlight, the midtone, uh, whatever you like. Just kind of play around with it, figure out exactly what it is that you like. Um, you can bring down the luminance level of that too. So if you think it's too bright, you can drag the luminance level down and kind of balance just that one individual area and color like this right here. You can see the difference by toggling that off and on. And I also like to use that softness. Now see that in the sky, how the clouds kind of bleed through a little bit better when you adjust that softness. So I just like to find a good spot. We're gonna do the same thing, add another color wheel, and we're going to go ahead and do another color. And we're gonna go with the grass here. This kind of uh, vibrant part of the grass. There's lots of different colors to the grass, but that's like the very green part. And we're just gonna kind of drag it around till we find the color that we like make it look the most natural. And we can turn down the midtones on the luminance. Let's do one more. Let's grab another color, another color mask, and let's look at this kind of yellow grass here. And we're gonna just drag it around again till we find the color that we like. And we're just gonna keep repeating this process to all the dominant colors in the scene. And then we'll move on and kind of scrub the playhead to another part of the scene and we're going to see how those colors look and we may end up making tweaks to them because we don't like the way it looks uh, in the shadows or whatever it may be. So we're going to go ahead and try the same thing here for this grass. It's kind of an orangish red, but uh, you know, maybe we want to make that more more orange or less orange or whatever we want to do. It's really this is what's great about it. This is your Bob Ross moment. You can kind of do whatever you want. Make your happy little colors. And then here I'm just adjusting the saturation. All right, so let's do one more. Let's grab something else like this building. So we highlighted that and you can see, you know, maybe we want to go a little more teal. Maybe we want to go orange with it. Adjust the luminance of the shadows to kind of make it a little more contrasty. And we can toggle it off and on, see how it looks. So let's do another one. We're gonna add another color here. So right here, we're gonna do the concrete. And maybe we're gonna go green, orange, red, teal, I don't know. We're just gonna drag it around until it has a good look. I mean, and you notice that I'm not going very far off the center with that color dial. It's very close to the center still. I'm not making huge adjustments to change the whole saturation of that color, just a little bit. And that's, that, that's the difference between with and without effects. So there's the before, and that's what we've done so far. So you can see there's a big difference already on the way that it looks right out of the camera. And maybe we wanna come back to this color curve, and maybe it's just a little too contrasty in the, in the mid-tones, and we can adjust that if we like. And there's the highlights again. Kind of play with that till we recover the, the amount of clouds that we want or the highlights. So I don't always do this, but for the sake of this video, I'll show you just a, like a preset that you could add to things like this. I know orange and teal is a very popular look. So you can adjust the sliders on something like this to kind of give it that orange and teal look. Uh, if you want to be like Michael Bay and uh, do these epic shots like this, I I'm just going to add this on here just so you can kind of see what adding an additional effect could do. But honestly, most of the time, uh, these orange and teals 
Um, I just add them into my color wheels and the color mask as I'm color grading to kind of just get it where I want it. But I'm just gonna show you just one practical add-on effect that can, you know, kind of drastically change things if you wanna use something like this. Uh, another tool you could use is sharpening. Um, I find that this camera is already pretty sharp, so I don't know that you really want to add sharpening to this. I guess it just depends on the lens you're using, the time of day, uh, that kind of thing. But it, you can add a bit of uh, sharpening. I think this default sharpening here in Final Cut is too much, so you'll probably want to turn that down. 1.5 or maybe even one. And honestly, I, you really don't even need sharpening. I'm just gonna show you in case you feel like you do need it on one of your shots, you can add it. Uh, but I wouldn't go crazy with it because this camera is already pretty sharp. Okay, now that we've added some uh, separate color wheels, we've got our exposure kind of where we want it and our white balance, we're gonna scrub through to some different scenes and we're gonna make some adjustments. So right now I think it looks too saturated. So I'm gonna turn down the global saturation on that wheel number one that we were adjusting. This has no color mask and also the temperature. I'm gonna play with the temperature a little bit because I'm not sure that that color balance we did was really exactly what I want. And of course, this is all uh, subjective to your own personal taste and look. So this is just the way I'm doing it. You can play with it, make it look how you want it to look. So we're gonna add another color wheel, another color mask, and maybe we're gonna grab this dirt because we didn't really do anything with the dirt color before. And it's gonna kind of tweak that. And you'll, like I said, as you play through, you're gonna look and see this looks a little off, or this is too vibrant, or that's washed out. So it's really nice to be able to go back through and just kind of tune things in the way you like it. So that, that dirt looks a little bright to me, so I'm gonna turn down the highlights on it just a little bit, and then we're gonna adjust the mid-tone color of that. And you can turn it off and on and kind of see the difference. And some of this stuff is very subtle, and, and that's okay. That, it should be subtle. It shouldn't be overbearing, some of these changes. So I'm just gonna go through and tweak some of this. I'm also noticing I don't really like the orange and teal the amount of shadows, if something just looks a little blown out or overexposed to me, so I'm gonna just mess with this. And again, I, this is not something I would typically always use either. I'm just throwing it on there for the sake of presentation. So we can go back into that color curve though. There we go. We can pull down that mid-tone a little bit so it doesn't look so washed out and kind of play through and just see how things look, make sure there's no shadows that are crushed or anything like that. And it already looks much better there. Now, obviously this is a very contrasty look here. I mean, you can see the shadows and the bushes there are very, very, very dark. And that's because of the orange and teal plugin I added, uh, probably crushed uh, the, the blacks a little bit more, but that's okay. Like I said, it's up to you. It's whatever you wanna do. This is just uh, an example of some of the stuff you can do to enhance uh, your colors. And if you wanna crush them, crush them. If you wanna make them more light, make them light. It's up to you. I'm just showing you some techniques that you can use to make your footage look you know, better than it does right out of the camera. I'll go ahead and toggle off and on the settings. So that's what it looks like out of camera. And here's my really crushed uh, colors that I did here. So uh, like I said, I think that's still just a bit much on the colors. So you can turn that off. I may not even end up using that, but I just wanted to show you uh, what that looks like. Yeah, there's before, after, without the uh, orange and teal look. I think that may be just a bit much on the uh, crushing. We can boost the shadows here. Now, something else you could do if you feel like you needed to is you can add additional stabilization uh, through your software. Um, and it does take some time to process and you can go back and watch it and then you can make adjustments to the smoothing or how it translates through zoom or rotation. Uh, but honestly, I don't think you need to. I mean, if you wanted to do one section that was maybe bumpy or something, you do have the option to, to do that as well if you wanna make your footage look a little bit more smooth. Uh, but 99% of the time, I don't use additional stabilization. Okay, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but I do export all of my footage in 4K. So I set it up in a 4K timeline, even though it's only 2.7K in camera. Um, and then I select the uh, MP4, not the MOV. So you can select here how you export it. And I always do the highest encoding, not the fastest encoding, the better quality. And yeah, like I said, I always export in a 4K timeline, even though it's only 2.7K, because a lot of platforms like Facebook and YouTube will compress that, and I think it does a better job with the 4K footage. All right, let's take a look at some of the final footage that we got out of this. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, like I said, this is not a 4K camera, but uh, man, it comes really close on this little tiny little camera. It does a great job. So you can look at the link in the description if you wanna see the full one, but just wanted to show you what we came up with. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video till the end. Uh, I, these are just my opinions on how to do all this stuff. Everybody does it their own way. 
but I do get a lot of comments, people saying that the video looks really clean or clear or the color grading looks great. So I wanted to share that information so we can all post great videos together. Hey, and if you are interested in buying an Insta360, please uh, use my affiliate link. I get a small commission if you do that. Uh, and sometimes there's discounts and deals that come with that too, but it really helps my channel grow. Uh, like I said, it's a small commission, but it does help fund this channel and help me keep putting out new videos. If you do like my videos, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.